First off, I want to point out that yesterday's day on the water was not horrible numbers wise. Numbers were fine. That wasn't the issue. You told us that you thought we'd catch one to four pounders visiting this lake. And we caught mostly fish in the right around one pound class. We oh, didn't sure. find the four pound fish that we were looking for yesterday, the three pounders even that we were looking for yesterday. So judging the day as being a rough day of fishing wasn't necessarily we couldn't get bites. We had a really hard time finding the quality of fish that we wanted to find. That oh. one. Come out of there, there you go. And that fish is fired up there, Mr. Bertrand. <laughs> he didn't like that chop over right his head. Right off the bat, yep. He and we'll take him, come on up in here, buddy, and we'll get a hold of that. We're started. We're Good started. <laughs> We're gonna go with huge, I'm going with huge. Not really, but it does go to show that chopos, I think a lot of people think when they throw a bait like this, they're only looking for big ones and they'll all bite it. What do you think you attribute that to, first of all? I would say the biggest thing was we were pretty stubborn and myself, especially with topwater. And ultimately, hey, that's what we were able to get bid on. Like, you know, we were being stubborn, throwing the chopo all day. That's what we had our bites on. We had some decent bites that maybe we didn't hook up with. Ooh, look how fast he's coming out. Yeah, oh, there dude. Yeah, you knew that yeah, was we trouble. We finally ate our yeah. lunch. We were being stubborn with it. And yeah. we're getting to the end of the fall. We both said, this might be our last topwater day of the year. Let's go make the most of it. And uh, just wasn't quite the deal for the big ones. Some excuses that the fishermen will give you. Myself as a fisherman, excuses yeah. I'll give you. We had a full moon. Yep. Um, Not only did we have the full moon, the full moon was still overhead. It was. It, it, it was. It was up when we started fishing yesterday. And that one's on the larger one, and uh, he got your front hook too. All about the shade, man. Yeah. Oh, he, you're right, and he did get the front hook because we missed a couple. We're fishing after a full moon. Yep. We're sitting here talking about. And actually, the full moon's probably he's now must have just set. The full moon's been up all mornings. So again, but ultimately it lies back on us as anglers to make the adjustments and right. figure it out. A couple things I'd add to that too. We and you alluded to it. We were fishing a dying bite, a dying pattern. And the day before it might have been a little better. The day before that it might have a little bit better. But the pattern was petering out over time, and we were hard headed about that. Uh, the other thing about that I think is that when you're getting a bunch of bites, it's easy to get suckered into that. You kind of get screwed into doing that thing because your brain's telling you, well, we're getting enough bites, we're getting enough bites. And like you say, you end up dying by that. And sure. especially when the bites aren't staying pinned. But I also want to throw out that the only bait we could get bit on was that little chopo. We tried to make adjustments and that was the one they kept coming to. They kept, the only one we were getting any positive feedback from, and that's really important. Yeah. Well, I want to point out though, that the little chopper right here, and we started, and these were ironically tied on. This was not a, something we talked about ahead of time. I had this tied on when he showed up, and, or when I showed up, and he did as well. One non chopo bite we got yesterday was a beautiful throwback you made with, with the gulp jerk shad. He grabbed my rod, we saw a fish roll, or no, he blew up your chopo. You threw, grab my rod with the there with the is. with the gulp jerk shad, throws it back, and that fish bites, and even he comes off, which tells you. And you waited the hook set out perfect, camera was rolling the whole thing, boom, got him, and then he just comes off, which tells you they're just being nippy about baits 100%. all the way around, and um, and that's not a fish you lose most of the time. I agree. I'm trying to remember where he was at. No, uh, was he to the left, left. Of there. Yeah, he was left to there. Let's see if he comes over and gets it. That's light line. Okay. For what you're doing, anyway. It's good to know. I like how fast you're working that. You yeah. gotta make him look like he's injured, right? Come on. Oh, got him. There you go. That's why the follow Look at that, dude. Hey. I missed him. I missed him did, again. Did you really? I missed him again. Oh, hmm. no way. He was hooked for a second, though. That I don't think he's coming back. Let me ask you this. The throwback bait. We, we throwback bait being something you throw to fish that blow up. It worked only one time for us yesterday. Any ideas on why they were that? I mean, what, how, does that surprise you? That surprised me. Yeah, it, it did. And I just, it just speaks to the negative mood that those fish were in. Like you said, they were excitable, but they were negative. They weren't necessarily feeding big time. And yeah. um, gosh, I, I, I ultimately, I think if there was one factor, I'd put it on the full moon. I'd put it on the fact that again, it's a dying bite. Oh, got him. Got him. Did you get him? No, he, he hit it twice. Hit it twice like a shark. A shark. Shark, shark, <laughs> shark, yeah. If I can ever get my bait in here. Was he right there? Yeah, right there. I mean, man, it just shows how negative they were. When you throw a, you know, a soft jerk bait in there, 
right, right behind a, a blow up on a topwater and you can't get that fish to hit it again. Yeah, um, especially a big, it's, it's a big chunk of gulp.